Hello, I'm Marcus Sedgwick. I'm here at the RNIB's Talking Book Service, uh, their recording studio. And I'm here with Anna Canning, who is reading uh, the audio book of my new book, She Is Not Invisible. And Anna is blind, so she's reading it uh, from the Braille edition. Anna, what kind of writing do you like? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that's a bit, well, Straight really in horrible there. Questions. I hate being asked that question. <laughs> okay, um... You got favourite books? Yeah, I mean, what I would say is that um, I probably don't read as wide a range of books as a sighted person because there aren't audio and braille versions of as many books, which is okay. why probably that question throws me into a state of panic. Yeah. I mean, the last time I read very regularly was when I was at school. Okay. Um, because obviously books were accessed for me there and brought to, you know, arranged for school. Um, now in my working life, I have I do a lot of reading as part of my work. Yeah. But um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I wish I'd had these questions in advance. Yeah. I'm already thinking that now. <laughs> but if you were okay. reading for pleasure, how would you go about hunting out a book? I would um, have to contact RNIB mm -hmm. or another um, talking book library, but I do prefer to read Braille, mm -hmm. um, though I use audio sometimes if the Braille version isn't available. Okay. But your your choice is very limited by uh, the choices, what's available. Yeah, I think it's um, someone probably needs to check this out, but I think it's about three to five percent of books are in, available in an accessible format. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. How did you get into becoming an audiobook narrator? I got started out in um, voiceover work um, in general quite young. I was 16. Um, I started reading audio magazines for the Talking Newspaper Association. Mm -hmm. And then I did a bit of work in local radio. And then for a few years I had a small production studio myself. So I was, okay. doing, yeah, so I was doing kind of um, commercial and corporate stuff then. And then this is actually my first full-length audio book, so it's an exciting day for me to do. Yeah, Quite scary, great, yeah. but an exciting <laughs> day. It's no, it's really, really exciting for. It. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's really exciting for me too. Um, we're so pleased we could get you. And on on that subject of, of reading the book, have you uh, found that you've developed an emotional investment in this book? Yes, I have actually. Um, I think it's always, you know, when you're asked to read anything, it's always like, I really hope I'm going to identify this. But the more I started reading this, the more and more I was like flicking through the pages and I read it once within like the first day so I thought that's good I've gelled with this book it's going to work you know and I, I definitely you know all the messages and things that are in it are excellent yeah. managed to work so much in but not in a kind of obvious way it's just there as part of the plot and it's like oh you know he's found out about all this it's brilliant it's oh really, well that's really, really I, honestly well I was very nervous when I heard that you were reading it, because, you know, I wanted to... What's she going to make of this? Yeah, and also because, you know, I've been working at this school in, in Worcester, mm. uh, New College, mm. and um, when the girls there who I've been working with on and off for the last couple of years, when they first read it, I was beside myself with nerves. And Terrified, then yeah. and then someone else. Yeah, because, so, I, you yeah, know, it, it, it was a very... Um, I felt like a big challenge to try and do, so I'm mm. very pleased if you think it's... It's worked, it's worked. brilliantly, yes. Um, and talking about being nervous, has, yes. it, has it been nervous for you having me here listening to yes. your recording today? <laughs> yes, it okay. went very smoothly for the first couple of hours. Hours and as soon as you were like listening, it's like, oh, the author's listening, it's no, his words, <laughs> and I'm reading his words. I hope I'm putting the right interpretation on everything. Yeah, so, yeah it's, yeah, it's a bit scary, but, but no, it's brilliant that you can be here. You know. Well, I'm delighted, and, and uh, we think it's going really well. I'm really so impressed, so thank you very much. Really enjoying it. Um, so, have you got any advice for anyone who thinks they'd like to get into narration? Just practice, and if you're reading from Braille, you've got to practice reading quickly and fluently, and that is more difficult with Braille. It's doable can be done but yeah. you've got to put uh, invest a lot of time into getting your braille reading speed that quick yeah. and to people generally again still practice and practice different voices different different um different types of reading not just books all kinds of narration all kinds of audio um to give yourself the broadest range of work opportunities possible as yeah well. that sounds like good advice yeah. um, one thing i notice when you're reading is that you have your left hand um, is that on the line that's coming yeah, next? It's, it's marking where I am okay. on the page, so I'll basically line myself up to read, and then I'll only read a small part of the line with both hands, and then that left hand, as you say, will drop down, ready yeah. to line me up for the next bit. Okay, and could you actually start reading that line with um, your left hand, or is it just to mark I don't your scan place? ahead too far, yeah. um, otherwise what's happening under my fingers wouldn't uh, work sense. with what's coming out of my yeah, mouth, okay. what I'm actually saying, I'd get all confused. Yeah. So I scan ahead, I line myself up to read, but I can't scan ahead in the same way someone would with print, I don't think. Uh, I think that's one of the most impressive things about uh, what you're doing, because I know, you know, when you when a sighted person is reading, their eyes are scanning yeah, ahead. Yeah, I can't and you, do that. And, no. and obviously that's not uh, possible no. for you, and therefore it seems even more impressive 
that you can get the the intonation of a sentence right when you. I you just know. have to be really familiar with the text. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, yeah. to make sure that I pretty much obviously you don't know it off the heart, but you know what's coming up. You know the plot. You've kind of tracked all the kind of nuances that you're going to need in the people's voices, the different emotions that run through the plot. And yeah. Yeah, and try to be as prepared as possible. Okay, and connected to that is the the question of accents as well, because this is a, a book yes. that, I mean, you've got the you know female uh, narrator and yeah. her little brother, and then yeah. obviously they go Lots to America. Of voices. Yeah, and how, how's that been for you? Challenging. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's good. I'm, I've immersed myself in American radio for the past week, listening to as okay. many different types of American accents and different ages and people's voices as possible. I love voices anyway. I'm mm -hmm. always listening to voices. I get a lot of clues about what's going on around me from how people sound and from what I hear, obviously. Yeah. So um, I'm very sort of tuned, tuned in to that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it's a challenge to actually replicate that in front of a microphone when the pressure's on and yeah. your nerves are running yeah. by, you know. <laughs> so so how, how has it been being a teenager in this? It's quite fun, it's, actually. Yeah. I mean, I can't say I was... Uh, I wasn't necessarily overly happy myself when I was 15, 16. Mm -hmm. so, so to read about someone who's, you know, a character that's already got to the point where she is beginning to find her feet... Um, it's nice to be able to read it from that perspective, actually. Because mm. when I look back at when I was 15, 16, I don't think I would have had her confidence. Yeah. Now I would, but I don't think I would have done it. So it's lovely to kind of be able to put that young, spirited energy into something, yeah. but to read it with my... It's, she's kind of got a similar mindset to what I have now. Okay, that's so interesting. So the crossover's really, really interesting. Yeah, I was, I was working with... Um, quite a lot of the girls in, at New College and we, we spoke a lot about confidence mm. and um, they all seem to feel that they, because I said you all seem like really confident young people to mm. me the first time I met them mm. and then I went back a few times and you know the deeper we got into yeah. conversation I started to discover that their confidence is very often a front that they have to put it. on yeah, exactly. um, because if they don't behave confident then people, I won't interact with them. When I read that passage in your book I thought how true. Yeah, well that was, that was just from, <laughs> from speaking. You know. Uh, to the students, yeah, so. A lot of the time it is the only way you can get by and, and get noticed and, um, yeah, yeah, get through. Yeah. 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 Uh, what was your reading experience like as a teenager? We touched on that briefly. Um, yeah, I did a lot of reading as a young child. I was very, very enthusiastic when I was learning Braille. I started learning Braille when I was four. Is that, uh, is that particularly early? That um, no. Like it's, yeah. Well, I went to mainstream school, so I was learning that at about the same pace as people around me were learning to read print. Okay. Um, so, but I took to Braille really quickly. I, lo I always loved reading. Yeah. Um, so as a child, I read a lot. Yeah. Um, but then, <laughs> dreadfully, when you're kind of sort of 13, 14, you get into study mode and then you yeah. start reading books only for study. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then you so kind of typical. leave school. Yeah. And then I, a lot of my reading since then has been kind of factual for work. Mm -hmm. I suppose. No, that's a very typical So it's uh, lovely experience. to have the opportunity to read some fiction yeah. and just actually enjoy it and get immersed in it. Yeah. So it's, yeah, no, it's lovely. Given the choice, you would prefer to read, therefore, I think you're saying, from a Braille edition, not read an audio book? Me, personally, yes. Um, just because I have a complete affinity with Braille and it's something that I'm worried is going to be replaced completely by technology. Okay. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against technology. Mm. I use a lot of technology. But there's something very special about actually having a physical book. Yeah. But of course it's a more expensive production method, so I worry that it will sort of just die out. And I couldn't do my job without Braille. No. So I'm very, very attached to it. If I hadn't learnt Braille, I would never have been in voiceovers. Yeah. I, be I believe, anyway. Oh, that shows how important it is. So to yeah. me, it's been vitally important. That's okay. why I'm so passionate about it. No, oh, good. Fantastic. And do you, do you listen to audiobooks? I do listen to audiobooks. I listen to a lot of um, audiobooks that are read on the radio, like Radio 4, mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of audio plays. Okay. Um, I do get some audiobooks out from the library, but I'm sorry, I would always see if it was available in a book first. Yeah. Just my preference. No, that's good. Well, I think that's, that's pretty much everything. Thank yeah, you thank you. Yeah.